Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will discuss about reliable broadcast and Byzantine agreement. These are two very important problems in distributed computing. So, we will uh, formally state the problem statement of reliable broadcast, Byzantine agreement and we will see the relationship between these two problems. So, let us start with the problem of a reliable broadcast often called as RB problem. So, what we are given here? We are given a synchronous system of n parties and when I say synchronous system, I mean to say that the uh, channel through which the parties are connected with each other have bounded delays. That means, there is strict upper bound on the message delays and everyone will be knowing within how much time an expected message is uh, supposed to be delivered. Okay. We also assume pairwise secure channel model here. That means, we assume that between every pair of parties, there is some secure channel already available through which the parties, the, that corresponding pair of parties can exchange messages securely. So, for instance, if this is ith party and if this is jth party, then we assume that there is a secure channel between ith party and jth party. Any message with ith party receives over this channel, uh, ith, uh, it will be known to the ith party, it is coming from this entity pj. That means, the identity of the senders will be known and if p i and p j are honest parties, honest in the sense that they are not under the control of the adversary, then since this is a secure channel, no one can figure out what exactly is getting communicated over this channel between the ith party and the jth party. So, in some sense we are assuming here that we have uh, n parties who are part of a complete network. Right. The underlying communication model is modeled as a complete network of n nodes, where ith party is the ith node of the network. Okay. That is a system given to us and one of these n parties is a designated sender party. Say this party is the sender party, it will be known as part of the protocol specification who is the designated sender and there is some input available with this sender from some domain. Again the domain will be known, but what exactly is the sender's message it will not be known beforehand. Okay. So, in its most simplest form the message m could be just a single bit or it could be enormously large message. And we are in the Byzantine corruption setting. So, we assume that among these n parties at most t could be controlled by a Byzantine adversary. And the most important part here is that that sender could be also potentially corrupt, need not be always the case, but among those t parties sender could be one of the entities. Okay. Now, we want to design a protocol let us denote it by pi sub r b. Okay. And when I say protocol, it will be basically a sequence of instructions for each party and that part that protocol should achieve three security properties. The first property is the termination or the liveness property, which demands that each honest party should obtain an output after some fixed time big T, which will be publicly known. Okay. That means, it should not be the case that the process, uh, protocol never terminates at all and the parties keep on running the protocol forever, that should not happen. There should be some well known time, fixed time within which all the parties complete their respective instructions of the protocol and obtain an output that is called that is called the termination property termination requirement it is often called as the liveness requirement. The second requirement from this protocol is that of consistency. Okay. So, what does this broadcast in the term reliable broadcast signifies? 
the term broadcast signifies that the sender would like to send its message identically to everyone. Okay. It is like some broadcaster is relaying or broadcasting a live uh, telecast of a cricket match. Right? So, it should not happen that that broadcaster is showing different viewers different version of the match. All the viewers uh, of that broadcaster should see the same version of the live telecast, right? even if the broadcaster gets potentially corrupt. So, that is captured that requirement is captured through the consistency property, which demands that each honest party and when I say honest party I mean to say the parties not under the control of the adversary parties not under the control of the adversary. Okay. So, remember we have n parties at most t could be corrupt and at least n minus t will be honest. So, at most t corrupt parties and at least n minus t honest parties. The exact identity of the t corrupt parties and the exact identity of the honest parties need not be known, but the parameter t and n minus t will be publicly known. So, the consistency requirement is that each honest party after time t should have a common output call it m star even if the sender is corrupt during the protocol execution. So, if during the protocol sender is corrupt and is trying to send different versions of its message to different honest parties, still there should be interaction happening according to the protocol pi r b among the honest parties, which should ensure that after interaction everyone are on the same page and have a common output m star that is a consistency requirement. And this m star could be different from m if the sender is corrupt I stress. Okay. Because if the sender is corrupt then it at the first place he may not have a m at as its input it might start with some garbage input. We require that even if sender starts with a garbage input at the end of the protocol everyone should have a common output. that is a consistency requirement. Okay. And the third requirement is the validity requirement. The validity requirement demands that this common output m star which all the honest parties are going to obtain after the time t should be equal to the sender's message or sender's input m if sender was honest during the protocol execution. Right. So, you see the consistency and validity property uh, uh, one is required with respect to a corrupt sender, one is required with respect to a honest sender. We require that if the sender is honest, then let the parties execute the protocol, they interact among themselves to find out whether sender is cheating or not blah blah blah. At the end of time t everyone should output small m right if the sender is honest during the protocol execution and consistency requirement demands that even if the sender was corrupt during the protocol execution through the interaction at the end of time big t everyone should output an identical message call it m star which need not be the senders input okay now why this validity property is uh, required or stated as one of the requirements of the rb protocol because if we do not have this validity requirement, then this reliable broadcast problem is very easy to solve. Everyone can just output a default m star, say m star equal to 0, everyone that will ensure that termination is satisfied because everyone just have to output a bit, they do not need to interact, they do not even need to talk with each other. And consistency is by default satisfied because everyone is outputting a default value. 
it is a validity property which actually makes the problem more interesting. Right. If everyone just outputs by default 0, then that 0 may not be the sender's message m, sender may have the bit 1. We would require that through interaction the parties should identify that okay, sender's message was 1 and they should output 1 instead of outputting a default value. Right. So, if we do not have this validity requirement, then the problem is very trivial to solve. So, that is a, a reliable broadcast problem. Okay. A related problem is the Byzantine agreement problem. We use the short form BA and here also the system model is same as for the previous problem. We have a synchronous system of n parties in the secure channel model and each party has a private input. Okay. So, I am denoting the input as V1, V2, Vi, Vn from some publicly known domain. Okay. So, in the most simplest form the domain could be uh, the set 0 1. That means, the input of each party is just a bit, but it is a private bit. That means, when the protocol starts uh, executing P 1 will not know the input bit of the other parties and so on. Okay. At most T parties among these n parties could be Byzantine corrupted, but the exact identity of those T Byzantine corruptions will not be known beforehand. And we, dis we want a protocol, let us call that protocol as pi sub B A, which should satisfy three properties. Again, the first property is the termination or liveness, which demands that it should not happen that the parties keep on running the protocol forever. There should be some fixed known time, call it T prime within which each honest party should obtain an output. By the way, all these properties are with respect to honest parties. We do not care whether the corrupt parties keep on running the protocol forever and we can never stop them from doing so, because we have absolutely no control over what the corrupt parties are going to do, what output they are going to consider, whether they are going to consider any output at all. But we will require that the honest parties which are not compromised, which are not under the control of the adversary should have some well defined behavior. So, one of the well defined behavior is that they should have a, they should have an output after some predetermined time. That means, it should not happen that they also keep on running the protocol forever. And this time t prime, it varies from one protocol to another protocol. So, we may as, we, so later on we will see varieties of Byzantine agreement protocols. So, one BA protocol may have a different T prime compared to another BA protocol and so on. Okay. So, that is the termination or the liveness requirement. The second requirement is the consistency requirement, which demands that each honest party should have a common output after time T prime, call it V star. Okay. And that is why the term agreement, okay. we want to ensure that even if the parties start with different inputs, they should come on a common count, they should come to a common conclusion, they should be on the same page. So, they should have a common output V star after the time T prime. And again now we have this interesting property, the validity property, which makes the problem very interesting. The validity requirement states that if the inputs of all honest parties were same at the beginning, say the input was V, then all the honest parties should stick to that output. It should not change from V to any other value. Again, if we do not put this validity requirement, the BA problem is very trivial to solve, everyone just outputs a default value. 
if the domain is the set 0 1 then a one line code a one line BA protocol could be output 0 everyone output 0 that is all no interaction and definitely everyone will terminate this protocol consistency will be satisfied, but it will not satisfy the validity requirement because if everyone by default output 0 and if all the honest parties had their input 1 then the validity condition is not satisfied. It is a validity requirement validity condition which makes the problem very interesting. Okay. Now this BA problem is often called as the distributed consensus problem in the community. Why it is called distributed consensus? Because we have n systems uh, and we have because we have n parties and each party has a different state, different input to begin with. So, you can imagine that the private inputs of the parties is nothing but their respective states. Okay. So, these parties could be the database, they could be system components, they could be parts of, they could be processes of operating system and so on. So, we have n entities, each of them as its own private state and we would require we would like to have a protocol executed among those n entities n entities which ensures that they come to a consensus that means they output a common output after some fixed time even if they start potentially with different states different inputs but if all the good components if all the good system components of all the honest parties start with a common input they were having the same state then the state should not get changed. The output should remain the same as it was if at all all the good components all the honest components were having the were having in the same state. Okay. So, very often uh, you, so, so you must have heard about this term blockchains. And blockchain technology is basically a form of distributed consensus. Because on a very high level, what happens in the blockchain protocol is that you have several copies of blockchain available at different locations and we would require a protocol which allows the entities to interact among themselves and after every update in the blockchain if any update happens in one copy of the blockchain through this interaction through this protocol through this consensus mechanism that update is reflected across all the other copies of the blockchain. So, that, that is nothing but doing some form of distributed consensus only. Right. So, that is why Byzantine agreement is a very very fundamental problem in distributed computing where we would require n components to come to a common state come to a common conclusion by running a protocol among themselves. So, there are various types of RB and BA protocols. So, the first category of protocols are called as the perfectly secure protocols. sorry for this uh, rending issue. So, when we say perfectly secure RB or perfectly secure BA protocols that means the corrupt parties are computationally unbounded. Okay. That means we make absolutely no assumption regarding the computing power of the T corrupt parties. As a result no cryptographic tools can be deployed and all the three security properties namely the consistency, liveness and validity property are achieved in an error free fashion through perfectly secure protocols. A slightly weaker category of protocols is the statistically secure protocols where adversary is still computationally unbounded that means no cryptographic tools are allowed. But now all the security properties need not be achieved in an error free fashion that means now you are allowed 
a very small negligible but non zero probability in the protocol output that means the three properties namely the liveness and the consistency and validity these properties should be achieved with high probability okay so if you are wondering what is the negligible probability you can on a very high level in layman's language it is a it's such a small quantity that it can be ignored for all practical purposes say of order 1 in 2 to the power 128 okay and the last category of protocols uh, is the cryptographically secure protocols where you are allowed to use cryptographic tools because we make the assumption here that the adversary the set of t corrupt parties uh, is under the control of a computationally bounded adversary that means adversary can now no longer perform exponential amount of computations and here also all the security properties the three security properties should hold with a high probability but there is always a non zero probability non zero error probability which is allowed in the protocol outcome so you might be wondering that why i should go for statistically secure protocol or cryptographically secure protocol because security wise first of all they are secure against a less powerful adversary and not only that they give me security guarantees not 100% they give me security guarantees with high probability so of course i should opt for perfectly secure protocols where the security guarantees are 100% but later on as the course proceeds we will see that the resources required for perfectly secure protocols when i say resources i mean the running time of the protocol and uh, the number of messages which are exchanged and the number of corruptions which can be tolerated in the protocol that is what I mean by resources. So, later on as the course proceed we will see that the resources required by perfectly secure protocol uh, uh, are typically more than statistically secure and cryptographically secure protocol. So, it is you have the trade off if you want full security against the most powerful form of adversary. So, you have to pay you have to deploy more resources if your resources are very critical then but you are fine to tolerate a very small error probability go for statistically secure protocol or cryptographically secure protocols now let us see the relationship between the rb and the ba problems uh, from the problem descriptions they might sound very familiar very similar but they are not but there is a very nice relationship between the rb and the ba problem so imagine you are given an rb protocol so imagine there is a rb protocol we don't know the details but imagine there is a sequence of steps which satisfies these three requirements now given this we can design another protocol solving the Byzantine agreement problem that is a direction that is a relationship in one direction and we can show the relationship in another direction as well namely if there is a Byzantine agreement protocol then using that Byzantine agreement protocol we can solve the reliable broadcast protocol problem as well. This relationship in both the directions hold as long as the number of corruptions in the system is strictly less than n by 2 and the system is synchronous. That means you can go from one problem to another problem and vice versa if the number of corruptions in the system is less than strictly less than n by 2 and if the system is synchronous that means given an rp protocol you can convert it into a ba protocol and vice versa let us see the relationship how we can obtain protocol for one task given a protocol for the other task so let us see the uh, direction from rb to ba so imagine you have a t secure rb protocol when i say t secure rb protocol i mean to say it satisfies 
all the three requirements of RB reliable broadcast even if up to T parties in the system get corrupt during the protocol execution and imagine T is strictly less than n by 2. Right? That means after time T everyone will have some output that output will be a common output even if the sender is corrupt and that common output, output will be sender's message if sender would have been honest. All these three properties are satisfied. Using this protocol pi RB, I can design the following BA protocol pi BA. So, recall in the BA problem every party has its own input, we do not have any designated sender, we have every party with its own input, whereas in the RB problem only one of the parties has the input namely the sender. Now, in this BA protocol which I am designing, my first step is the following. I ask each party PI to act as a designated sender and invoke an instance of this protocol pi RB namely the reliable broadcast protocol to broadcast its input VI. Right? So, P1 will be, so this step will be done by every party PI. Right? So, each PI that is why I have written each PI. So, this is like for i equal to 1 to n. That means, p 1 will be acting as a sender, where v 1 is the input of the sender for the instance of the reliable broadcast protocol and everyone will be running an instance of this reliable broadcast protocol assuming p 1 to be the designated sender, where the sender's input is v 1. In parallel, there is another instance of RB protocol which will be executed where P2 will be serving as the designated sender with its input V2 and like that there will be in parallel ith invocation of the RB protocol getting executed in parallel where PI will be the sender with its input VI and in parallel there will be the nth instance of the RB protocol where Pn will be serving as the designated sender. So, basically what we are doing here is run n parallel instances of pi rb, where in the ith instance Pi is the sender with its input Vi. Okay. Now, remember that among these n invocations of R b up to t invocations could be by the corrupt senders. Okay. So, at most t instances of pi R b correspond to corrupt senders and the parties will not be knowing who is the corrupt sender, who is the honest sender. They are just participating in, in parallel invocations of pi R b. Of course, they will be knowing who is the sender for one instance for one specific instance of R b. Right? So, we can always assume that when multiple invocations of the same protocol is getting executed then to distinguish between the messages of one instance from another instance, we associate tag the identifier of the instance and so on. So, those details we can always assume. Now, what is the liveness guarantee of pi R b? The liveness guarantee of pi R b is that after time big T, the instance will be over and each honest party will obtain an output. So, that means the first instance of pi R b will be over at time t, the second instance of pi R b will be over at time t and like that the nth instance of pi R b will also be over at time t. Okay. So, it is not the case that all the n instances keep on running forever. Moreover, we know that from the consistency, eh, sorry from the validity property 
Okay, let me first say from the consistency property. of pi r b all the honest parties will have the same output from the first instance of r b right. So, the instance of r b where the p 1 as was acting as the sender will produce a common output for all the n parties that is coming from the consistency property of r b like that if I consider the nth instance of pi r b invoked by the sender p sub n that will produce a common output for all the honest parties again coming from the consistency property. So, that means if I consider the output vector why output vector because there are n instances of pi r b. So, there are n outputs which each party is going to obtain I can visualize the n outputs which each party is obtaining as a vector. So, through the consistency property of pi r b it is guaranteed that all the output vectors will be same. So, it would not be the case that p 1 outputs one set of output vector and p 2 outputs another set of output vector no that is not going to happen because the consistency requirement the consistency property of pi r b ensures that even if the sender of that pi r b instance is corrupt everyone will have every honest party will have the common output in that instance. Moreover from the validity property of pi r b if I consider the ith instance of pi r b then the output which every party has obtained in that instance will be the input v i of p i right. Because in the i th ins input p i would have invoked the instance of pi r b to broadcast its input v i for the b a ok. So, that means the two properties that we have now guaranteed are the following the output vectors that each party is going to have will be common and among in that output vector if I focus on the component corresponding to the honest parties input that will be the input that that honest party has for the B A problem. Now, we have to provide an output decision rule for the pi B A protocol because the B A protocol requires a common output from all the honest parties. So, the output that each party produces in this pi B A protocol is the following they simply output the majority value of their vector. So, sorry for the typo this should be V 1 star V 2 star V n star because their output vector is V 1 star V 2 star V n star. So, they see if there is a value which occurs majority of the times if so they output that value if there is no majority in this vector then they set v star to some default value in the domain ok. Now, my claim is that this B A protocol that we have designed it satisfies the termination property why it satisfies the termination property because each honest party will terminate the n instances of pi r b that will take time big t and after that they just have to find the majority of the output vector. So, this pi b a protocol will also get over after time big t. So, termination is satisfied this pi b a protocol will satisfy the consistency requirement why it will satisfy the consistency requirement because the output vector of all the honest parties will be common we have already argued that. And what is the output of the B A protocol the majority of that common output vector. So, everyone will be applying the same majority rule to their respective output vector which is common across all the honest parties which ensures the consistency property of the B A. And this B A protocol will satisfy the validity property as well. Why? Because if 
all honest parties, if all honest PI had same input say V, then through the majority rule V star will be nothing but V. This is because we have argued that the validity property of pi r b ensures that the r b instances for the for the honest sender parties will produce the output v v v v v. So, for instance, if p 1, p 2 and p of n minus t are the honest parties, then the first n minus t components in the output vectors of each party will be v, 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 v. The remaining n minus t could be any values, but since we are assuming t is less than n over 2, that means majority of the values in the output vectors of all the parties will be v and that is why v star will be v and that is why the validity property of the BA protocol will be retained. Now, let us see the relationship in the other direction. Assume you are given a Byzantine agreement protocol which is T secure and imagine T is less than n, we do not even need T less than n by 2. That means, the BA protocol satisfies the termination gap property, it gives you the consistency property, it gives you the validity property. Using that we want to design a reliable broadcast protocol where say this party a designated party is the sender. Now, in the reliable broadcast protocol, the first step is let the sender send its message to all the parties. Okay. So, remember in the reliable broadcast problem, no other party has any input except the sender. So, the first step is let the sender send its message to everyone. If the sender is corrupt, then it can send different versions of its message to different honest parties, but if it is honest, it will send the same message to everyone. Since the system is synchronous, it will be guaranteed that after time delta, which will be publicly known that is the channel delay, every party will get some message from the sender. Of course, if sender gets crashed, so remember sender could be potentially corrupt right? and it could be corrupted in a Byzantine fashion and Byzantine corruption subsumes crash failures. So, it could be the case that sender just sent M to one of its neighbor and then it simply gets crashed. So, the convention that we follow while designing or while writing synchronous protocols is the following. If a party is expecting a message from a sender party and if within the delta time or the delay within the channel delay that expected message does not turn out. then the receiving party substitute it with some default value and proceed to the next steps. It does not wait infinitely. So, considering the scenario, if the sender party sends its message to one party and then suddenly crash, then suddenly crashes and it does not send anything to the other parties, then the other parties will assume as if the sender wanted to send some default value say m prime. The default value will be publicly known it will be specified as part of the protocol description. Okay. So, we do not write separate codes, so separate else if then statements for handling the cases when no message or no expected message turn out within the expected timeout. Whenever an expected message does not turn out within the expected timeout, the receiving party substitute it with some default value thinking this is the message which sender would have tried to send me and go to the next step. So, the first step of this RB protocol was that the sender send its message to everyone and as I said, if it is corrupt, it may send different versions of its message to different honest parties, but if it is honest, if the sender is honest, it will send an identical copy of its message to everyone. Now, after the time delta, every party has some message on the behalf of the sender. If the sender is honest, all of them have the same message. If the sender is corrupt, they might have different versions of sender's message. 
but as part of the RB protocol they have to come to a common conclusion what is the sender's message. So, it is very simple what they can do is they can simply now run a BA protocol and we are assuming that there exists a BA protocol satisfying the termination consistency and validity properties of BA. So, that BA protocol every party runs and what is the input of the PI ith party in that instance of the BA protocol? It is the sender's versions of the message which ith party has received. So, P1 participates with input M1, P2 participates with input M2, nth party participates with input Mn and so on. Now, the termination guarantee of BA is that it produces some output after time t prime. So, whatever output BA protocol produces for the honest parties that is considered as the output for the RB protocol by the parties. So, it is easy to see that the termination property of BA implies termination property of RB because this protocol will get over by time t prime plus delta for everyone. The consistency property of B A guarantees consistency property of R B. Why? Even if sender is corrupt, suppose sender is corrupt and send different versions of its message to different honest parties, the instance of pi B A which the parties are running will ensure that they come to a common conclusion regarding the sender's message which sender would have sent to different honest parties. And the validity of B A guarantees the validity of R B. Why? Because if sender is honest then it will send the same message M to every honest party. So, everyone will have received M, 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 M from an honest sender and everyone would have participated with input M in the instance of B A and validity of B A guarantees that if all the honest parties have the same input then they stick to that output at the end of the protocol which will be implying the validity of R B. So, that is a relationship between the R B problem and the B A problem one problem is solved the other can be solved and vice versa. So, the relationship between R B and B A which I have uh, discussed in today's lecture you can find it in either this textbook or this textbook or even in this PhD thesis okay. and the problem description of R B and B A you can also find them in one of these two textbooks. Thank you.